Well, look at this. It is a point of pride in Spokane's skyline. Now the U.S. Pavilion in Riverfront Park is reimagined and redesigned. It's night two of the festivities at the new pavilion in Riverfront Park, and the pavilion was all lit up. Pretty spectacular there. Good evening and thanks for staying up late with us. I'm Tim Pham. We could not have asked for a more beautiful night for all of the festivities downtown, but a change is coming and meteorologist Michelle Boss is tracking much cooler temperatures this week. She's standing by now with an update. Michelle. That's right. The second half of the weekend is certainly going to feel like a different season than the first half of the weekend, but we were really lucky last night and tonight for the festivities downtown. I know we started off with some showers Friday morning that cleared off by Friday night. And of course, we had beautiful weather all day today with mostly clear skies. Temperatures this evening have been in the upper 60s and lower 70s. They're currently 69 in Spokane right now in the upper 60s across the Idaho pan and it's still pretty warm out across central Washington. Omac in the lower 70s. Moses Lake 78 still sitting in the mid 70s from Pomeroy to Lewiston, but things are going to be changing. Upper level trough of low pressure just pushing into the west side right now, and you can kind of see what's associated with that. Quite a light show in the Seattle area over the last couple of hours. They're seeing heavy rains and thunderstorms, mainly along the Cascades and west, but that trough is going to be pushing in our direction and bring us some unsettled weather tomorrow and much cooler temperatures. For the next 12 hours, though, things are going to be relatively quiet. Uh, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies overnight. Temperatures dropping down to the upper 50s to around 60. Our earliest chance of rain comes in around nine o'clock, but it may be mid morning before we start to see the wet weather work its way into the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. Here's a look at the next three days. Definitely feeling more like fall highs, about 20 degrees cooler than what we saw today in the mid 60s showers tomorrow. Chance of showers also on Monday and Tuesday with high temperatures well below normal in the upper 60s to around 70. Michelle, thank you. A young man died last night after he fell more than 30 feet from a cliff at Riverside State Park. First responders struggled to find the man and his friend who called 911. By the time they did, it was too late. Krem 2's Brandon Jones has the latest and the new 911 call we're hearing for the first time. Yeah, and behind me you can see just how tall some of these mountains are here in this area. Rocky edges at the bottom of all of these and officials responded to a call just prior to 7 p.m. of a man who fell down one of these steep hills. By the time they had helicopters and rescue teams on the job, though, it was too late. 1020, we're still on the phone. A report of a 20 male that fell off the rock is now unconscious. It happened just west of Bowl and Pitcher Park. Two friends ventured off into the higher rocks and cliffs before one of them slipped and fell. The Spokane Sheriff's Office says the man who lost his life was 21 years old. His friend who was with him was also in his 20s and tried performing CPR on the man before rescuers arrived. Sounds like the best access is east of the address by the rock, 124 code, starting from Monroe and Walton. The attempted rescue mission experienced difficulties because of low visibility and had to do multiple passovers before locating the man. They were eventually found because the friend had a yellow shirt on that they were able to spot. The sheriff's office says they'll continue to look into the tragic accident, but won't release a name until a later date that's more appropriate. In Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News. Forecasters say Dorian is picking up strength as it approaches Canada. The official death toll has risen to 43 in the Bahamas, and it's expected to keep increasing. We don't have no power, no water. It's hard, hard, hard to live. We sleep outside. Well, that man is a, dr a diver who is trying to evacuate after the hurricane, but relief is on the way. A British military ship brought aid to the Bahamas and a cruise ship brought more than a thousand people to Florida. Dorian left behind widespread damage on North Carolina's uh, Oak, uh, excuse me, Ocracoke Island, excuse me, and stranded hundreds of people who defied mandatory evacuation orders. This is a very close knit community and people assure me that everyone is present and accounted for. In its latest advisory this afternoon, the National Hurricane Center said Dorian's maximum sustained winds increased to 100 miles per hour, making it a category two hurricane. When hurricanes like Dorian happen, we always hear about people jumping in to help, and many of you have been asking whether there are laws to protect Good Samaritans in these situations. To get the answer, our Verify team checked state laws and spoke with a civil law attorney. They found variations of Good Samaritan laws in all 50 states. Those are meant to protect Good Samaritans in certain situations. Know that you're covered by Good Samaritan laws as long as you're acting in good faith and you didn't cause the emergency 
that put people in danger. You're protected from any liability resulting from your actions, even if you fail to rescue them, make a mistake, or unfortunately don't even save their lives. So on the flip side, most states don't require you to help someone during an emergency, but there are exceptions like in Minnesota. If you're at the scene of an emergency, you are required to assist or call police. So we can verify, yes, if you help someone during a disaster, you are protected by Good Samaritan laws. Well, WSU defeated Northern Colorado today. We'll have more on that a little bit later in sports, but perhaps the highlight of the day for Coug fans came during halftime. It's then when the school introduced former Coug quarterback Ryan Leaf as a member of the 2019 WSU Hall of Fame class. Brenna Green brings us more from Pullman on Leaf's story of overcoming way more obstacles than just defenders on the football field. For a long time, I didn't represent the Crimson and Gray very well. And because my name was recognized and talked about all the time when I messed up, you guys were drugged down into the mud with it and you didn't deserve it. It's an opportunity for me to apologize to all of you for having been that person for so long. That's what Ryan Leaf had to say at the WSU Hall of Fame induction on Friday night. We caught up with the quarterback as he experiences another weekend on the Palouse. A few years ago when you got out of prison and, and you're trying to start fresh, did you ever think this moment was going to happen, that you'd be here? No, you know, no, never. You know, it wasn't something I was thinking about. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Leaf. Ryan Leaf's story has been full of twists and turns. For the last four years, though, he's taken it one step at a time. Eventually, that led him to being inducted into the WSU Hall of Fame this weekend. I was just trying to put one foot in front of the other and, and kind of do the next right thing. And, you know, these types of things happen when you when you do that uh, and opportunities present themselves. And it just shows that, you know, we're making a great impact out there with the things that we're doing. So I'm, I'm really, really happy and, and grateful to be a part of this. Leaf was at first hesitant to accept the honor. His mentors, though, encouraged him to keep walking his journey. Being inducted into the Hall of Fame is kind of all about you. And that was always my problem. So. But they also made it very clear that, you know, none of this happens if it weren't for the last four and a half years of our life. And, uh, and it would be silly not to go and celebrate. He's not only celebrating his induction this weekend. It's about celebrating the people who walked or quite literally ran with him as well. It was an opportunity just to make it a celebration about that team. And we've had a few players who are no longer with us uh, who battle the same type of disease I battle. And, and uh, that, that type of thing can't happen again. We have to be there for one another and be responsible for one another. And so Ryan remembers those people and those memories as he creates new memories this weekend, step by step. It's been wonderful. Uh, it's been neat to be able to bring my family back and celebrate, you know, some of the best, best memories in my life, um, being a Coug and, and, and being here. And so just, I think a lot of gratitude. I, I, I don't, it's hard to actually say. It's just it's kind of special things that have gone on in my life the last few years, and uh, this is definitely at, at, at one of the top of them. I also asked Ryan Leaf how his experience with ESPN has been so far, as he's a color commentator on their airwaves this year. He says it's been great, and once again, he is just full of gratitude. Reporting in Pullman, I'm Brenna Green from Two Sports.